All right, I wanted to give uh, an update or uh, an example of why it's important to understand uh, nutrition science and just science in general, research methods, um, research writing in general. So this is uh, something I use in uh, some of the classes I teach as an example of how the, the headline and the abstract may not necessarily be supported by the, what was actually done. So um, in this case, it has to do with um, sugar restriction or fructose. That's what the title is. Fructose restriction and improvement, health improvement in children with o obesity and metabolic syndrome. And, you know, the a key issue here is it's isocaloric meaning it's weight controlled and the, the same calories so that weight shouldn't change. And so that's what the, the last segment here is irrespective of weight change. And uh, so just to, to give that perspective, so We'll go through the, the methods and all this stuff, but the, the conclusion is that uh, weight stable fructose restriction, at least that's the intent, isocaloric, led to improved markers of metabolic outcomes in children with obesity and metabolic syndrome, regardless of, irrespective of weight change. Uh, yeah, I'm going to focus just to get through this somewhat quickly. Um, so restricted recruitment to Latino youth, African American youth, um, who identified as high consumers of sugar habitually, so greater, greater than 15% of sugar, greater than 5% of fructose. Um, uh, they used fruit frequency questionnaires. They didn't do a direct assessment. Um, and they were interviewed by a dietitian from which their baseline macronutrient profiles as percent of calories, fat, and protein uh, and, and carbohydrates were identified. Estimated energy requirements. Um, and after the first 17 participants were studied, seven were noted to have lost 2% of body weight. So caloric targets for each participant were increased by 10% thereafter. Um, key point. And so, uh, so 40 ish percent of the 17 participants in order to have lost weight. Um, and so they had to make caloric adjustments. And so the isochloric part wasn't necessarily held. And so weight stability wasn't accounted for. The menu was planned to restrict added sugar while substituting other carbohydrates, such as those in fruit, bagels, cereals, pasta, and bread, so that the percentage of calories consumed from carbohydrates was consistent with their baseline diet, but total dietary sugar and fructose were reduced to 10% and 4% um, from greater than 15, greater than 5 of total calories res respectively. Um, so they were still eating sugar, still eating fructose. Um, so some of the weight loss, uh, or weight, sorry, <laughs> Table one, some of the outcomes, results, sorry, uh, were day zero to day 10, almost a kilogram decrease in body weight, which is, so in essence, two pounds of weight was lost in 10 days. Just for comparison, the Twinkie diet that I was on had a similar weight loss trajectory, about a kilogram uh, per day, uh, or per week. 
it was a little bit 10 days a little longer um but in essence two pounds a week and i was so mine was 10 weeks and i I'd, I'd lost a little more than that 27 pounds over that 10 weeks so it was 2.7 but um sort of really close so it's uh an issue with significant difference so it's there was weight loss um bmi dropped uh, significantly, no change in reported observed fat mass, well, not reported observed fat mass, decrease in fat free mass. So, likely, it says fat free could be body water in, in 10 days. Um, I doubt it was muscle mass, um, but so fat free. So, anyway. Um, so here I have, you know, energy intake was about 2,600. Dr. Davis from What the Health, doc, the documentary. So that's the reason why I chose this study to use is because it was just discussed in the documentary, What the Health. And Dr. Davis stated it was 1,600. Uh, maybe he misremembered. Um, so it was 2,600, I believe, um, instead of 1,600. But still... The issue here is here's the mean change in weight over those 10 days. So significant decrease in body weight pre post. And so the majority, so here's, I like the approach. So one of the things I like about this figure is that they have individual changes. And so you can see there were some people who gained mass, some people, the majority though lost, decreased. And so one. That's a concern because um, the process of losing weight leads to changes. You know, intermittent fasting, uh, the metabolic switch, etc. When you're in the process of negative energy balance or negative energy state, uh, insulin, glucose, triglycerides, stored fuel um, t- tends to be different, and so. What you see is, so day zero, day 10, insulin's less. So is insulin less because they weigh less and they're losing weight? Or is it because they took sugar out? Don't know. Um, Glucose, a little bit less area of the curve, I think was different. We'll get to that here in a minute. Um, And... uh, this is for all participants. And so for those, so for the 10 pair T tests, um, so for the participants who gained weight, so these 10 gained weight, uh, they gained weight, they still, so this is a uh, lower peak, um, but the no difference thereafter. Um, fastings different, fastings different, but no change in uh, insulin versus all 43. So I mean, the main driver for the full list of participants was uh, likely weight loss. And so If you want to see a greater change, it's uh, restricting calories is a beneficial way to do that. And I think this this supports other data. Um, And so this was also, uh, I believe, post hoc, this analysis, since that's one of the other concerns from a research design perspective. Uh, We're pulling those out post hoc. Um, after the fact. Um, So for all 43, um, difference due to less sugar or weight loss, weighing less, um, or the process of weight weight loss. Um, All, basically a lot of the metabolic syndrome markers were reduced or different depending upon which marker was being studied. Um, 
So, um, so it makes it hard when this is supposed to be weight a weight stable diet. Um, hard to do. They should. They didn't have a control group. So that's a, the other problem with this study. There was just one group that they tracked for a week and they lost weight. And so a run-in diet to get them to weight stability um, of a week and then test might might have seen presented different outcomes. So for the, the 10, you also see uh, for uh, the children who did not lose weight, uh, they gained weight. So it's these people um, uh, for the 10 participants in the post hoc sensitivity analysis who gained weight during the study. Um, you still see differences, so that's um, kind of notable, but glucose area of the curve, not different. Um, peak glucose during the OGTT was different. Um, 8 versus 8.7, um, and they gained weight. Uh, let's see. Some things were close. OMA IR was less, uh, which is basically it's a formula for comparing uh, glucose and insulin values. Um, but insulin in the curve was on different. Fasting insulin was. Um, the response to carbohydrate didn't didn't change. Um, fasting triglycerides were lower on day ten. Refrain acids didn't change. Um, anyway, so not as much different as was seen in uh, the group that lost weight, or the the, to, to, the total 40, uh, 43 subjects. Um, so the conclusion that was drawn um, was... The study mitigates concerns surrounding the, the sugar consumption in chronic disease have pre previously focused on its caloric equivalents and its role of fomenting increases in weight. Furthermore, previous clinical studies have relied upon excessive sugar administration, which introduces experimental artifact. The study mitigates all three concerns by intervening in children who are already sick with metabolic syndrome and by adjusting the effects of calories, weight gain, and adiposity. The study argues that the health detriments of sugar and fructose specifically are independent of its caloric value or effects on weight, which since there's weight change, that cannot be clearly delineated um, because the weight change of all 43 indicated where more significance was seen. So those Restricting calories, energy, energy balance, was more of a factor than um, sugar restriction alone. Um, and, I mean, a positive is they still had sugar and they saw some benefit. Um, so having a little less sugar, again, dose, if you decrease the dose, um, you may see benefit. Um, so, uh, one, this was peer-reviewed, uh, which is why knowing an area well, being an expert is so important because you can, you can catch some of these things and uh, request changes in the limitations or changes in how things are worded so it's not so strong that um, it was isochloric because it wasn't. Um, it was intended to be, mathematically it was, but since they were estimating intake versus measuring intake, uh, that was problematic. It, it, this may be a difficult concept to wrap your head around and to understand, but um, when I talk to students, this course is maybe viewed as just another class between 
you in graduation. Um, and I understand this, but it's critical that our that students in in the health sciences and and dietetics understand the science involved so that they don't get caught up in looking at the abstract, the conclusion, reading a title, or reading a press release and getting confused about the outcome. Um, This paper is what um, Dr. Uh, Lustig uses Um, He's a physician that has been opposed to sugar and and calls it toxic. Um, But this is what was used when giving talks and and writing books. And Dr. Davis was close to getting it right by asking about a control group because there wasn't a control group. And so um, maybe the control group had a different experience um, than the group that received the weight loss. the issue was his treatment group did something they were not supposed to do, and that's they lost weight. Um, and they ate fewer calories than, than they were eating, and so active weight loss tends to, to change biomarkers. And so this, so the other issue here is this is kind of what the Twinkie diet kind of showed, is decrease, still eat sugar, you can still eat sugar, and improve metabolism. These kids still ate sugar and they improved their metabolic profile and they lost weight, still eating sugar. So it's not sugar per se. It could be the dose of sugar. Fine, I don't have an, I don't have an issue with dose. That's kind of my stance is people don't like the energy in, energy out, calories in, calories out concept, but... Uh, it's not the actual food that's necessarily a problem. It's, um, and this is also just macronutrients. And so micronutrients can be a problem, um, not just macronutrients. And so weight and controlling macronutrients, there's more to dietary health and nutrition than sugar, protein, type of fat, um, and so that's what I hope I am able to convey to, to students and potentially to general consumers. And I, I, I ask that people who kind of disagree with the way I see things, um, you know, look at the data, look, share data, talk about data, use the data as, as truth versus what people say. So I'll end with that. Um, hope all are doing well. And until next time. Thank you.